Welcome back. So we're talking about the Fourier series now in our lecture series on the Fourier transform and wavelets, uh, which is from chapter two of our book, Data-Driven Science and Engineering. So I'm gonna talk about the Fourier series, which is a way of approximating arbitrary functions f of x as a sum, an infinite sum of sines and cosines of increasingly high frequency. Okay, so this is my function f of x. Uh, let's say that it's currently defined from negative pi to pi, so I'm gonna define something that's two pi periodic, these two pi periodic uh, sine and cosine waves. And I'm going to write down the Fourier series and kind of derive how, uh, how you can approximate f of x using these sines and cosines, okay? So I'm just gonna write it down and then we're gonna talk about it. So we can represent our function f of x as a sum from k equals one to infinity of cosines and sines of increasingly high frequency. So I'm gonna write this as some uh, a sub k cosine of uh, kx plus b sub k sine uh, kx, where a and b are coefficients. These are called my Fourier coefficients. Uh, and then this index started k equals one to infinity, and so these are my sines and cosines uh, of period one, period two, period three, and so on and so forth. And I'm also going to add kind of the zeroth frequency. If I had k equals zero, I would get a constant cosine term here, and so I would have an a zero. Uh, and I'm gonna scale this by two uh, for reasons you'll see later, okay? So I have some constant term plus a sum of cosines and sines of increasingly high frequency. So as k goes from one to two all the way up to infinity, these cosines become higher and higher frequency. These sines become higher and higher frequency. And these a, k, and b, k coefficients tell me how much of each of these sines and cosines do I need to add up to recover my function f, okay? So the last ingredient here is how do I actually compute these coefficients a and b? And before I start, I wanna, I wanna point out these cosine and sine waves are two pi periodic. I've specifically uh, made them so that this is, if I plugged in two pi for x, and if k was an integer, I would get uh, you know, two pi periodic functions in x, okay? Good. So now what we're gonna do is, is walk through how you actually compute these coefficients a and b. So my uh, a, k coefficients are going to be given by one over pi times the integral from minus pi to pi of my function f of x of f of x times my cosine kx dx, okay? And so you'll see already that this looks a lot like an inner product between f of x and cosine kx, and that's exactly what this is. This is just an inner product of f of x with that kth cosine wave, okay? Uh, and similarly, I'm gonna write my b sub k is equal to one over pi times the integral from negative pi to pi of f of x uh, with, multiplied with my sine of kx dx. Okay, good. So what we have here are now an expansion of f. We can approximate f by a sum of cosines and sines of higher and higher frequency with coefficients that are determined by the inner product, the, the Hilbert space inner product of my function f with that particular cosine. So the kth coefficient is my inner product of f with the kth cosine wave and similarly for b k's and sine k's, okay? And I'm gonna write this out explicitly um, here, this is, maybe I'll write it right here. This is uh, the inner product of f of x with my kth cosine function, cosine kx, normalized by the magnitude of this cosine function. Okay, so this is uh, normalized by one over the norm of cosine kx squared, okay? So that, that's a really important thing to do is when I project f 
into this cosine k direction, I'm talking in vector, uh, vector speak now, I need to normalize by the length of this function, and that the norm of this function is given by one over norm of cosine kx squared. You could compute this by taking the inner product of cosine kx with itself and squaring it, okay? Uh, or sorry, the, just the inner product of cosine kx with itself. That is the norm squared. Good. And similarly, for the, the bk, this can be written as one over sine uh, kx norm squared times the inner product of f of x sine kx. Okay, good. So what we've done here is we have written these coefficients a and b in terms of inner products with my function f and that particular frequency cosine and sine wave. And again, we're normalizing by the length, uh, by the length of those functions, the norms of those functions, squared, which happen to be 1 over pi in this case. Okay? Good. So there's kind of a geometric picture that goes along with this uh, that I think I want to show you because I think this is super important to build your intuition for what we're doing here. So what we have in our f expression is, some co is a sum of a k's times cosine kx's plus b k's times sine of kx's, okay? And I told you that these coefficients a k and b k are just my function projected onto that particular cosine and sine wave, okay? And so what I want to draw here now, this is how I think about these Fourier series. So let's say I have two sets of uh, two orthogonal bases for a two-dimensional vector space. So let's say I have uh, this little x unit direction and my little y unit direction here. And let's say I have a completely different orthogonal basis uh, given by u and v, okay? And if I have some test vector f in this vector space, let's say I have some test vector f, I can represent f in either my xy coordinate system or my uv coordinate system, okay? And the way I would do that is quite simple. If I want to represent f in my xy coordinate systems, I take the projection of f in the x direction, that's literally given by the inner product of f with x. So I'm going to write this out. Uh, we have f, and I'm going to write it in blue. Okay, so f hat is equal to the inner product of f with my little x unit direction in the unit direction of x, plus I do the same thing. I project f in the y direction, okay, plus the projection of f in my y coordinate direction times my little y unit vector. Now, if this was not a unit vector x and this was not a unit vector y, I would have to divide by the norm of x squared, and I'd have to divide by the norm of y squared, okay? Now, I can do the exact same thing in u and v coordinates. I could equally well approximate this function. I could say that this is also equal to f projected into the u direction. That's the inner product of f with u. It tells me how much of f points in the u direction, uh, plus the inner product of f with v in the v direction. Okay, this is u bar divided by norm of u squared plus the inner product of f with v in the v direction, norm of v squared, okay? So what am I doing this for? I'm trying to convince you that the Fourier series definition here is exactly the same as how we write a vector f in an orthogonal basis in R2, in a two-dimensional vector space. I pick some basis, let's say x and y, and what I do, the first thing I do is I take the inner product of f in the x direction, then I take the inner product of f in the y direction, and I take those coefficients, let's call these uh, kind of a1 and a2, I take those coefficients and I multiply them by the x unit vector and the y unit vector and I add them up. That's exactly what we're doing in our Fourier series here, okay? So let's walk through this one last time. We have our function f, and we're going to say that it is a sum of coefficients that are just the projection of f in that function direction, this basis direction, times that basis vector. 
So this is kind of the meaning of the Fourier series, is that my sines and cosines are orthogonal functions, just like x and y are orthogonal vectors. And I can take my function f and I can project, I can figure out how much of f is in this cosine direction, that's my a kth coefficient. And I multiply that by that cosine function and I add all of those up. Okay, so I want you to think about this. This takes a little while to sink in, but the Fourier series is literally just how to write f in an orthogonal basis of sines and cosines, exactly how we're used to writing or, uh, vectors in orthogonal bases. Okay, now the last thing I wanna point out is that this is particularly useful for approximation. This is an equality, this is an exact equality. I can represent this function f through this infinite sum. But in practice, I might only want to keep some of these elements. I might only sum from k equals one to 10. I might only keep the first 10 sines and cosines. In this case, I only took the first three. And I would hope that I get a pretty good approximation to my function. And that's actually why the Fourier series is so useful, is because if I truncate this Fourier series, if I say approximately equal, and I get rid of my infinity and I just say 10, then I get a pretty good function approximation through a truncated Fourier series, okay? And that's something we're gonna talk about. We're gonna uh, work out some examples in MATLAB and Python to show how you would approximate functions using a Fourier series, okay? So key concepts, you can represent uh, these functions f in terms of a sum of sines and cosines of increasing frequency. The coefficients a, k, and b, k can be computed easily uh, numerically using these integrals. And there's a very clean interpretation of what these coefficients are. These coefficients are literally how much inner product f has in that cosine direction and how much inner product f has in that sine direction, which essentially means that we're figuring out how much f is pointing in each of these orthogonal function directions. Okay, so we'll talk about this more uh, next time and we will code this up also. All right, thank you.